Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Becker, and after I'd been in practice for many years, performing lots of spays and neuters on virtually all of the puppy patients in my practice, I started to notice that there were dogs developing certain endocrine-like symptoms, um, not major symptoms, but clear hormonal imbalances as adult dogs. Now keep in mind these were dogs that were fed biologically appropriate fresh food diets. Many of them were eating organic foods. They were not over vaccinated. So I was really confused, to be honest, about why this was happening. I thankfully had a super amazing endocrine mentor that I was able to call and discuss uh, my concerns with. And he provided a lot of really life-changing information for me. Dr. Jack Oliver, a world-renowned animal endocrinologist, was able to really help put the pieces together about the myriad of very strange symptoms I was seeing in my patients. And unfortunately, he also helped me realize the awful truth of what was going on. Spaying and neutering was the genesis of the health problems I was seeing. And it was very difficult for me to accept this because I was the veterinarian that performed the surgical procedure. Both spaying and neutering remove all of the sex hormones secreting tissues from a dog's body. The problem is that dogs need a certain level of circulating sex hormones and in the right proportions for normal physiologic and biologic functioning throughout life. When the ovaries and testicles are removed from a still developing young dog's body, it can affect everything in their body from their brains to their bones, and that has been proven. Without ovaries or testicles, the task of producing sex hormones falls onto your dog's adrenal glands, and those tiny pea-sized glands that sit on the pole of your dog's kidneys were never meant to deal with this overwhelming burden. These little tiny tissues, the adrenal glands, are the only remaining tissue left in your pet's body that are capable of producing some sex hormones after animals have been desexed or spayed and neutered. Over time, the adrenal glands can begin to over-secrete hormones like cortisol, cortisol is your dog's fight or flight hormone, as well as over-secrete estrogen and progesterone, as well as sometimes testosterone in an attempt to give the body what was just ripped out because of the surgery. As you can only imagine, this can lead to additional hormonal imbalances in your dog throughout the rest of your dog's life. And when this happens, it can affect many of the other organ systems in your dog's body, including their immune system, and even actually can influence their lifespan when it comes to predispositions to certain types of cancers. In addition, studies have shown that there's a higher incidence of dogs with, that are dealing with noise phobias, fear-based behaviors, aggression, and actually unwanted sexual behaviors as well in spayed and neutered dogs. And that's something that we're just now beginning to see the correlation when it comes to the behavior changes that, are, that happen after animals have been desexed. As a spayed or neutered dog reaches middle age, there may be warning signs that the adrenal glands are having a hard time keeping up with the demand for sex hormones. Some of the things you can start looking for are behavior changes like excessive fear and anxiety are oftentimes some of the first things you'll see. You can see mild changes in energy levels. Animals could just be lethargic. You could say your dog kind of acts depressed, doesn't feel like doing much, their energy level is very low. Other symptoms which I see very regularly and actually were the symptoms that clued me on that there could be a problem with these otherwise super healthy dogs that I was trying to create in my practice were increased thirst in urination, urine leaking, weight gain despite the fact that those animals are being exercised profoundly and daily, lethargy and actually hair loss and skin and coat changes. So a lot of these dogs were, would have patchy hair loss Thyroid would be low normal, but not low enough to actually treat for hypothyroidism. So you absolutely can see thyroid imbalances, and that's partly because those sex hormones play into the hypothalamus adrenal pituitary axis. And without those sex hormones, the whole endocrine axis gets shift, shifted. Because of that, the skin conditions are actually most notable. You can see animals with thin hair, uh, dry, flaky hair. There can be some hyperpigmentation where you can see um, oftentimes in the groin, but also along the hips or on the side, you can see patches of skin turning dark or black. So nothing all in all life-threatening, but still in my attempt to create perfectly vibrant, ultra healthy dogs, it wasn't happening um, with all of these conditions. So my, if my clients were coming in saying, hey, what's happening with my dog? They would come in for their every six month exam and I would say, something's wrong. We're missing the picture here. So. In addition to being spayed and neutered, um, you have to think about other things that could be influencing a dog's overall ability to be vibrantly healthy. And for dogs, you don't have to think too hard because they live in a toxic world. Actually, dogs are exposed to 
chemicals on a daily basis. Um, and this class of chemicals that is most profoundly impactful for their endocrine system are, are known as endocrine disruptors. So endocrine disruptors include DDT, PBA, dioxins, PCBs, lead and other heavy metals, triclosan, phthalates, and arsenic. And all of those chemicals are found in a variety of different places that your dogs, even in all green home, your dogs have really consistent exposure to. Because these endocrine disruptors mimic estrogen hormones, they can actually lead to a further imbalance of your dog's own endocrine imbalances. So when you combine these two factors, which are disexing or traditional spaying and neutering with everyday exposure to potentially harmful chemicals, it can create an even greater burden on your dog's poor adrenal glands. And if you add all of these changes and challenges to the fact that most dogs are not eating a biologically correct diet, which means they're eating an entirely processed dry bag of food day in and day out, a lot of those ingredients coming out of those dry foods are estrogenic to begin with, soy and yam, but not to mention the amount of chemicals that are found in pet foods. All of these things play into your dog's ability to manage their own endocrine balance. And honestly, I believe we're having an epidemic of dogs that are not being balanced uh, with their endocrine systems. And honestly, we're not discussing it because it's assumed that all dogs will be spayed and neutered and whatever consequences come of that, well, it's just what happens when you have a spayed or neutered dog. As an animal healer, I felt tremendous regret that I had unknowingly damaged the health of my spayed and neutered patients. I, I just feel terrible. You've probably watched other videos. Uh, I'm not going to cry in this video, but it's difficult to talk about because I did it. And I did it out of an attempt to uh, provide the very best to my patients. I grew up working in a kill shelter and I had very strong opinions about everything being uh, sterilized. But what I didn't know going to vet school is that vets had a choice in how they sterilized their patients. And I was only taught one way in vet school, like every other veterinarian, we're just taught to remove all of the sex hormones. We're not taught any alternative sterilization techniques. Now we know that it's, it's just as easy and cheaper and safer, less time in, uh, under anesthesia, to sterilize dogs without removing their ovaries. We can remove their uterus so that they don't bleed and they can't carry a litter of puppies, but we can leave their ovaries in their body. But that uh, surgical option was not available at vet school. In fact, they're still not teaching young veterinarians that surgical alternative as of yet. We're working on that. But all that to say, I had tremendous guilt about thousands of dogs that were now endocrinologically damaged because of my viewpoint that they had to be traditionally spayed and neutered. So of course I did what every other veterinarian would do and I tried to find a protocol that would pick up the pieces and do some damage control in repairing and at least supporting my dog's endocrine uh, balance in their bodies for the rest of their lives. Number one, I stopped insisting that every puppy who came into my practice was automatically spayed and neutered. Um, instead, I immediately switched to sterilization techniques that spared the testicles and ovaries. And you can now, it'll take a little work, you can absolutely find veterinarians that are versed with some of these alternative uh, spaying and neutering techniques. It's now not nearly as hard to find as it was 20 years ago. These newer procedures render dogs unable to reproduce while preserving normal endocrine function, and that's the key. Since most veterinarians, including myself, until I knew better, do conventional space and neuters, chances are that your dog has been desuxed the traditional way and probably at a young age. What very few people realize and what almost no one is talking about is that once dogs no longer have ovaries or testicles, their bodies will struggle for the rest of their lives to create and maintain a healthy hormonal balance. It just is what happens. Since spays and neuters are the only sterilization procedures currently taught in veterinary schools for the most part in our country, and because it will take a little bit of time to change the philosophy and teach young students these new techniques, um, you end up having to look for some alternatives uh, to be able to help dogs who have already been spayed and neutered and how, what we can do now. What, what can we offer you now for damage control? This somber truth actually is what inspired me to find an effective all natural technique or uh, a modality, actually several different ways that can naturally help support the endocrine function and hormonal balance of spayed and neutered dogs especially those have been sp who have been spayed and neutered at a very young age. Some of you that have rescued dogs from animal shelters, those dogs are spayed at eight 
weeks of age. They're the size of guinea pigs. It's neonatal surgery. And when you think about those lifetime consequences of, as, of spaying an animal, a newborn animal, we don't yet know all of the ramifications, but we know that they're bad and we know that they are permanent. Unfortunately, most traditional veterinarians know very little about how to manage uh, those animals coming in with these symptoms. A lot of veterinarians can say, hey, look, your ALP, your alkaline phosphatase is continuing to climb on your dog. I don't know what that means, but I can see it's high. I can see that your dog looks hypothyroid. His hair coat's terrible. You feed fresh, organic. You're giving fish oil. I don't know why your dog's hair coat's so terrible. I don't know why your dog suddenly has phobias about storms and fireworks and fears people that they've maybe met several years ago. I think that oftentimes veterinarians don't know what to do and they certainly weren't trained uh, on how to balance hormones in vet school so they end up not really being able to offer you anything just because they don't know. Those animals that, uh, that I saw coming in with thin coats, drinking and peeing all over the house, being acting really weird, having major personality changes, that was my first clue that I needed to go looking for what was going on. So I really believe integrative practitioners have kind of led this forefront of not just beginning the discussion about what's really happening when we spay and neuter dogs. I think we're also leading at the front edge of helping dogs recover from being spayed and neutered. Certainly conventional practitioners are doing nothing um, other than saying, yeah, this is just what happens when you spay and neuter a dog. They're going to have these changes. Holistic practitioners are really diving into exploring how we can best support the body after this surgical procedure has been completed. There's no way we're going to donate back ovaries and testicles. So what can we do to help support those bodies as they go through life now endocrinologically unbalanced? There's actually a lot that we can do. Now, I myself don't use a lot of synthetic hormones. In fact, I would prefer to not use them at all. Those of you that have been through uh, a hormone balancing know that it can be risky, expensive, difficult to, uh, to check, but it means a lot of expensive blood work. But most importantly, unless you're using dog hormones in dogs, we also don't know the long-term consequences of using human estrogen or human estrogen blockers in dogs. So all that to say, my first choice is to approach this topic naturally. And actually, it's easier than what you think. Rather than using actual hormones, I like to use all natural nutraceuticals to support hormone balance and rebalancing. I learned about this protocol from my endocrine mentor, the late Dr. Jack Oliver of the University of Tennessee's Clinical Endocrinology Service. He actually started that service. He was my endocrine mentor for many years, from about 2004 to 2011. I could call this man or email him anytime, and he answered my endless questions. As I was trying to connect the dots of this incredibly confusing metabolic puzzle, he was incredibly supportive and, and just stuck with me through my entire process of figuring this out. What I discovered is after using the protocol that he suggested with a few minor tweaks that I needed to add in after being the perfectionist that I am, and I wanted perfect results, just not great results, I am proud to say that I've had really good success over the past several years supporting healthy hormone balance and rebalancing endocrine systems in dogs, including the adrenal glands. The protocol involves three ingredients that have been shown in studies to balance cortisol and other hormones while lowering high estradiol levels, which is estrogen, in a dog's body. The ingredients that Dr. Oliver recommended are HMR lignans, which come from the Norway spruce. Lignans uh, actually help to balance sex hormones. And unlike flax lignans, HMR plant lignans convert enterolactone, which are, acts as good phytoestrogen, in the gastrointestinal bacteria immediately upon ingestion, and then it's completely and quickly absorbed from the GI tract, which all in all provides a negative feedback loop to the adrenal glands, telling them to quiet down their own natural production of estrogen, which is super cool. So by feeding an all natural lignin, you're basically telling your dog's adrenal glands to quiet down. We're gonna supply estrogen in a food-based form, Adrenal glands, you don't have to continue overproducing it. So it's a very gentle, very effective, but very natural approach to dealing with hyperestrogenemia. So HMR lignans are a very good first step to the rebalancing puzzle. The second ingredient that I added in because I needed additional support for hormone balance is DIM or methane. 
Diethanol methane, or DIM, D-I-M, is a major active metabolite of indole-3-carbonyl, or IC3, which is a constituent found in cruciferous vegetables like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and cauliflower. Now, many of you might know about I3C because it has anti-cancer benefits, which it absolutely does. So dogs taking IC3, or uh, indole-3-carbonyl, are absolutely have a myriad of other health benefits, but interestingly, it has a lot of useful roles in the body. In this situation, we're using it to promote beneficial estrogen metabolism in both male and female dogs. The third ingredient is melatonin, and melatonin is super valuable for these dogs with hormonal imbalances because it modulates other hormones and promotes healthy cortisol levels. Interestingly, in humans, those with the lowest melatonin levels had more than twice the risk of acquiring type 2 diabetes, the form that dogs get as well. And it's interesting because blood sugar issues can become a problem post spaying and neutering. Melatonin does a lot of great things like help with hair regrowth. It does a great job with hyperpigmentation. So those dark spots that your dog may have in the skin, it does a great job of helping to lighten those dark spots, but it works synergistically with lignans and DIM to support estrogen metabolism. Today, I'm really thrilled to introduce the only commercially available product of its kind, my new canine hormone support, which actually replicates Dr. Jack Oliver's protocol to help counter the hormonal effects of spaying and neutering, plus added DIM, which provides a whole host of additional benefits for the immune system. Backed by solid research, canine hormone support is recommended for any age dog, male or female, who has been neutered or spayed at any age, it can also be beneficial uh, if you have an intact dog suffering from hormonal imbalances or adrenal stress, it can be beneficial for those dogs too. As well as any dog intact, desex, or sterilized who's been exposed to excessive environmental contaminants where their estrogen levels will be very, very high. Because of my own experience many years ago with spaying and neutering and seeing firsthand the devastating effects on my patient's well-being, I feel very strongly that desex dogs have symptoms related to this permanent surgery male or female, that can potentially benefit from this very special protocol. You can't reverse what's been done to your dog through spaying and neutering. There's no going backwards. However, you can support your dog's endocrine health from this day going forward. And my canine hormone support can help you do that.